Get ready for your daily dose of marketing strategies and tactics from entrepreneurs with the guile and experience to help you find success in any marketing capacity. You're listening to Marketing School with your instructors, Neil Patel and Eric Sue. Right, welcome to another episode of Marketing School. I'm your host, Eric Su. And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to be talking about seven simple SEO tactics that will skyrocket your traffic. So, Neil, why don't you kick things off? If you go to quicksprout.com or neilpatel.com and you go into one of the blog posts, you'll notice that I link to all my guides in the sidebar. I'm not doing that out of mistake or just like out of curiosity. I'm like, oh, let me link to them. You know, I want to see what happens. If you link to your most popular pages or the keywords that you want to get ranked for, like mine, a lot of times it'll be like online marketing, digital marketing, and it's linked from every single page, you start climbing the rankings. It sometimes takes six months to a year, but you rank really well. On Google, I rank number one and two, two separate websites, Quicksprout and NeilPatel.com for online marketing. Just think about how competitive that keyword is. And you know how many links I've been manually building to those uh, guides? Zero. All I've been doing is making sure that I'm linking to those guides on every one of my blog posts. Yeah, you're gonna to start to notice in today's day and age, when you're searching for something, you are going to see that there are featured snippets, which is, uh, let's say for example, you search for the, for the phrase, what is digital marketing with a question mark? You're gonna see that there's, there's actually a box that pops up. So what you wanna make sure you're doing to show up in those featured snippets as much as possible, you know, there's no exact science to it right now, but. There has been some work done around it showing what tends to, to, to show um, you know, featured snippets. And I, I know Moz did a really good post on this called How to Rank Zero. So you know, it is a study, but it, it is in, you know, by, by no means it's a kind of an end-all, be-all study. But basically what it does is it says, hey, make sure that you have a, your H1 title. So um, your H1 tag, I should say, that's, that's your header tag. Um, make sure what, what, what's right after that is a concise description of what it is exactly. So it might say, your H1 might say, what is digital marketing? And right after it's gonna say, okay, well, digital marketing is this, this, and this, right? And then Google, which is getting a lot better at machine learning, is gonna be able to detect that for you as they get better and better. And you're gonna show up for those featured snippets. So in that post itself, Moz showed that they were, you know, they, there's a post on, uh, I think the, the phrase was, what is domain authority? And a marketing agency was actually ranking above them for that, right? And what Moz did was they made a few tweaks to it. They changed their H1 headline and they adjusted, you know, a few snippets of the copy. And then boom, what do you know? All of a sudden they have that snippet. So they actually ended up taking it from that agency. So um, ranking zero, search for that one. That's something that's going to help you drive more traffic because it, it, it can increase your click-through rates anywhere from 33% to 100%. And that goes into click the rates, which is the third tactic. When you do a Google search, and if everyone's doing the Google search for the same thing, and everyone's skipping the number one result and they're clicking on the number two result, what does that tell Google? That tells Google that, hey, the number two result is more valuable than the first result, which means that you need to optimize your title tags. Everyone looks at title tags and like, let me just shove in keywords. Yeah, you should have your keywords in there. But if your title tag's not appealing and people don't wanna click on it, then you know what? your rankings aren't gonna do well. But if you're getting more clicks than everyone else who's surrounding you in your rankings, eventually Google will keep moving you up until someone else outperforms you with your click-through rate when it comes to your title tag. So make sure that your title tag is really appealing. And the way you do this is think of it as a human. What would someone wanna read and click through on? For example, when I search the keyword SEO, one of the most popular sites that ranks is search engine land. It's not necessarily that they have the most links, but it's because their title tag is so simple. What is SEO? It gets more clicks than something like the beginner's guide to SEO or the advanced guide to SEO or SEO made simple. A lot of people love Googling for what is SEO and that works especially well with complex terms. So a beautiful title tag that entices clicks can skyrocket your rankings. And there's another post out there called Second Page Scraping. I believe it's Second Order Page Scraping um, from, I forgot who wrote it exactly, but if you Google that phrase, you should be able to find it. And basically the idea is you're going into Google Search Console, and this is this kind of piggybacks on the idea of click-through rate, but you're going into Google, you're looking for the keywords where you're ranking, let's just say you're ranking on page two, for example. So you're, you're on the cusp of getting to page one, you're aiming for that top five ranking so you can have a higher click-through rate so you can drive more traffic. Well, 
To do that, I mean, again, go to Google Search Console, make a make a spreadsheet with the, the, the ranks where you're, you know, uh, below, you know, page 10 or your rank position 10 to 20. And then from there, you have that list, you can start to say, okay, you can use Neil's tactics around building links to those pages and getting them to rank higher. Or you can also, you know, write a better title, write a better uh, meta description as well to try to, you know, see if you can drive that click-through rate higher as well. And then, you know, sometimes it's in some cases, um, you know, one of our, um, one of my friends that that, work, that has been working with enterprise SEO, you know, what he says is Google likes to audition you, right? Um, and the, the idea is that, you know, if you're getting higher click-through rates while you're passing the audition, and then you're gonna, you know, be able to get onto, onto page one as well. So I don't have exact data around this, but it is something that, you know, makes sense and I have tested it, at, you know, myself, but I won't say conclusively that I have a lot of data around it, but I think it is worth a test as well. If you check out my blog, you'll also notice that I have a lot of long blog posts, like text-based, key or word-based. Yeah, sure, some of my latest ones are 2,000 words because I don't have as much time these days and I can't write 5,000 word blog posts. But when I first started neilpatel.com, I was purely producing four, five, 6,000 word blog posts, nothing shorter than 4,000 words. Why? More keywords you have, or more words you have on a page, more long tail terms you'll rank for. I wasn't shoving in keywords, I wasn't trying to rank for anything specific, I just realized that the longer content I produce, the more search traffic that I got in general, right? It makes common sense. More words equals more things Google can end up ranking you for. SERP IQ has a study on this and they actually show that the, a web page that ranks in the top 10 or the first page of Google typically has at least 2,000 words or 2,200 words. In essence, it's above 2,000. So if you can write more detailed content, you're much more likely to get more search traffic. It's simple, doesn't require any technical work. You don't wanna just shove in words purely for fluff so you can meet the minimum 2,000 word count, but you wanna write really good thorough-based content that people love with no fluff that's at least 2,000 words. Yeah, and the sixth tactic is that you wanna make sure that if you're producing more and more videos, which a lot of people are, Make sure at the very least you're transcribing it. Make sure you're using a tool like rev.com. You know, it's, it's pretty cheap. You know, it's, it's $1 per minute. But because people can speak from, you know, 150 words to 200 words per minute, you're having all this content created. Why not have it transcribed? So search engines can't crawl videos yet, right? But they can at least crawl the text. Make sure that you're transcribing it so, you know, you're getting that content crawled out there. You know, Neil just talked about having long form content. That's going to help you get more content out there, more words for the search engines to crawl. Another tactic that I love leveraging is Google image search. Everyone thinks about, oh, I need text. I want to rank on page one for Google for this keyword. What about images? No one really tries to optimize their rankings for image search. It's like a whole field out there that you're going to be competing with no one. Sure, it doesn't get as much traffic as a text-based search, but Google has a tab just for images. And especially if you're in the consumer-based world, using alt tags uh, or long description tags and naming your image files, not just like image01.jpg, but instead 1989 blue Toyota Camry 4-door dot JPEG, you're much more likely to get search traffic for specific keywords because Google's even integrating images within the text-based search. It's not always that people have to click the image tabs to find images. Sometimes when I do searches for like, I was thinking about buying a car the other day, silver Porsche 356, old car, they don't really make them anymore. And when I Google that, just the text-based results, they have images for that keyword, right? Like of that actual car. So if you can optimize your image file names and use proper alt tags, plus using keywords around the images for that page on your website, you'll start ranking well and you'll be getting tons and tons of visitors from it. All right, and that's it for today's episode of Marketing School. As always, let us know if you have any feedback at all or you have any other topic ideas for us. We'd love to hear from you. This session of Marketing School has come to a close. Be sure to subscribe for more daily marketing strategies and tactics to help you find the success you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best daily content possible. We'll see you in class tomorrow right here on Marketing School.